gets put into a foundation of the earth. So if we keep going and we keep going, what's the real foundation? Where are we praying from versus what are we praying for? Because a lot of us are praying even when we don't want to admit it. <laughs> We're praying from condition instead of praying from a foundation of clarity about what this thing is that we're actually activating. We're, ch we're praying to change a condition or to create a condition. And that will yield exactly that. <laughs> and there's so thing so much greater available to us. When I was looking up, and I, and I always do this, it's like, okay, where did this word foundation come from? Because language changes. You know? The word bully comes from Old English, and it originally meant good fellow. Go figure. Doesn't mean that now. <laughs> we, somehow we flipped it. So what do these words that we're using really mean? Foundation is that base, the keystone, the groundwork. It also means the source. If you think about it in terms of a financial foundation, what is sourcing this foundation? We have endowments, we have foundations. And when I think about the foundation of spiritual mind treatment from the perspective of what is sourcing us, then the source and the structure and the keystone all come together beautifully because it's the same thing. I am sourced, I am financed by the infinite. That's the abundance that we have. And yet, when I'm in that place where I think I need to pray for something, I don't know about you, but I forget that. I forget that everything I'm seeking is already fully present in me, as me, available to me. And I start looking out here for it, because Maybe you have it, or maybe you have it, or, you know, I'm certain Dina has it, because she's the president of the board. She has everything, right? <laughs> and that's how it works. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not. And some folks think I have everything, because I have that little REV in front of my name. No. <laughs> Let that go, because we're all going to be really disappointed. <laughs> The foundation is that invisible thing that we cannot see. That's called faith. The Bible describes it this way. Faith is the belief in things not seen but hoped for. If you can see it, if you can touch it, you can taste it, no faith is required. Okay? <laughs> It doesn't take me any faith to know that there are two pieces of paper here. It takes an observation. Faith is knowing that when I type and it shows up on a screen, then when I hit print, something magical is going to happen. I have to have a certain amount of faith in that because I don't, I can't see with these human eyes, how it gets from the keyboard to the screen, which the screen, I can't, you know, I could break the screen down here, but that'd be awkward. Okay. 
But I don't know how it gets from there to there. Now, I'm sure there's some IT people in here that all, your brain is just going to get a little bit. You could tell me that every day for the rest of our lives, and I still would not get it. Because I just don't get it. I don't get how faxes work. I can put it in a machine, push a button, and something happens here, and then magically it shows up in Europe. I'm sorry, I don't get that. <laughs> I get that it happens, but I can't tell you how. So I gotta have some faith that when somebody tells me, if you do this, this really will happen. Now, I've done it a couple of times, so now I have a belief. And I have a deeper faith. But those first couple of times that we're stepping out, what's our faith really in? And I want you to let go of this idea of blind faith. Throw that away. Because that's a lie. You can't have blind faith. You believe in something. Okay? It's not blind. We have to see what we can't see in order for what we can't see to be seen. Get that? <laughs> We have to see what we can't see so that what we can't see, we do see. Faith is not blind. Faith is an assurance that you know exactly who you are. That you know exactly the power that lives within you to create. And that you fully get that those urges, those desires, those things that are popping into your mind is that source communicating with you what it wants to create as you, through you. That's not blind faith. That's source-informed faith. And that's the foundation that I highly recommend we all pray from. Because if we pray from condition, I'm going to wrap myself out. I told Deborah a story last night that I had never told. We've been married for 12 years. We've known each other since 1998. I never told her this story because it's like, okay. <laughs> it challenges my manhood. <laughs> But it's really a good representation of the distortion that happens when we forget the truth of who we are. So I'm on patrol, security patrol, out of the day to day. We have the homeowners association out there. And if anybody has ever been out of the day to day, particularly in the winter time, at night, you know there are no street lights. And there is a plethora of fog. <laughs> really thick fog. And if you understand how fog and headlight refractions work at all, then you know that headlights and fog create an amazing distortion. So we have <laughs> this property that is actually away from the homeowners, the nice homes. It's a farm that everything doubles back to. And it's way out of the way. And part of what I am charged to do is to go down there, get out, open this gate, drive through, check the property, come back and lock the gate. So as I pull up, tons, I can't even see the gate. Right? So I'm like, well, I guess if I just go really slow and eventually I'll bump it, I'll find it. Because <laughs> the fog is that thick. But before I got to the gate, an image ran across the road. <laughs> now, that image in the fog and the distortions looked like it was eight feet tall. <laughs> and I'm like, I am not getting out of this truck. <laughs> you told me Sasquatch was not real, <laughs> and it just went across the road in front of me. No amount of rational thinking was changing that. 
I had a foundational belief at some level that Sasquatch just might really exist or there would have been nothing for that distortion to lock into. Now, as it turns out, it was a raccoon on its hind legs. <laughs> Not that big. Not that big. But I'm telling you, it was eight foot tall, had fangs. <laughs> And I was not getting out of my truck, and I did not get out of my truck. And I did not get patrolled that night. <laughs> but how many times in our own distorted thinking are we running from Sasquatch when all it is is a raccoon crossing the road? <laughs> you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one who does that. I don't think so. <laughs> so here's what I want you to know. You are sourced. You are founded. Not by, but in. Infinite possibility. Infinite possibility. Infinite abundance. Infinite intelligence. Pure unadulterated love, pure light, magnificence beyond what we can even wrap our little human heads around. That's who you be. And when we get that's who we be, we will start behaving like that. Because the way our human mechanism works T-F-U-A. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings create urges. Urges create actions. That's why we say change your thinking, change your life. Because everything falls from what we tell ourselves. So what would change in your life if you started every thought with the truth of who you are. If you started every breath intentionally recognizing your magnificence, not based on what you look like, not based on your bank account, not based on what you drive, not based on the physical form you're in, but based on the foundation, the very fabric of who you are. If you took every breath recognizing that you are the beloved in form, if that's who you are, what would you think about? See, we spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out what our beliefs are. You know what your beliefs are. They show up every day as you. <laughs> That's the good news and the bad news. <laughs> See, I can't look at Deborah to learn what my beliefs are. Because the very best I'm going to get are my beliefs about Deborah. But I'm still not getting what I believe. I'm distorting it. And as much as I want to believe in unicorns, <laughs> I believe more in luck dragons. <laughs> you've ever seen the movie The Never Ending Story? <laughs> I don't care about unicorns. I want a luck dragon. <laughs> I'm clear. <laughs> so if one of the two gets to exist, it's the luck dragon. <laughs> but try as we may, to put everything that we don't want to deal with in a bucket and set it outside our proverbial door of consciousness and wait for that to come by and take it away. It's always going to be there for you to trip over when you step outside the door. Because it's yours. I can't take your thoughts away. I don't have the power to change your thoughts. We saw something on Facebook, I think it was yesterday, Imagine how hard it is for you to change you 
And then you'll understand why you can't change other people. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not going to change, but you are. <laughs> really? Because we've convinced ourselves that the reason I think and feel the way I do is because you act the way you do. <coughs> no. No. We just sang a song this morning. There's nothing you need to change. Get really clear. That's not talking about your behavior. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's talking about who you be. The verse about I love the world just the way it is. Do you? <laughs> Do you really? Because if you don't, and most of us don't, it's because we're confused that the world is the form. It's not. The world is the foundation. Our vision is celebrating unity. There is no way for me to love me and not love the world. Because it's one and the same. Okay? It's one and the same. But we get stuck in the form. We get stuck in separating ourselves because this one acts like this and they should act like me. <laughs> because I got it all figured out. No, you don't. You have it all figured out for you. Maybe. Maybe in that little gap between the time your alarm goes off and your feet hit the ground. <laughs> That's when most of us have it figured out before we actually come conscious of our human journey and then we go about the business of being human, which is oftentimes in conflict to our spiritual. Okay? Jesus had it figured out. You know, he's a great example. We don't, we don't, in science of mind, we put Jesus as the great example, not the great exception. He's a teacher. And what his example was is what is available to us. And what Jesus knew from day one till day end is exactly who he was. And no matter what anybody said, no matter what anybody did, the guy never wavered. Nothing. He never wavered, which is what got him in trouble. Because folks wanted him to support this, and these politicians wanted him to support this. And, oh no, you cannot be telling the truth because that's wrecking our social structure, and it's wrecking our economic structure. And quit hanging out with hookers and thieves because we're trying to get rid of those people, so stop talking to those people. And how dare you treat everybody the same because we're not. I love the world just the way it is. Do you? Are you willing to walk through the world treating everybody the same no matter how they show up? Because you know with absolute certainty that you're God having a conversation with God no matter what. That's our call. As religious scientists, that's what we signed on for, is to know the truth of one another. Now, that does not mean we excuse ignorant behavior. Let's be really clear. That does not mean we go through life and, you know, <laughs> somebody walks up and punches you in the face and you just go, oh, you're perfect, home complete, thank you. <laughs> no. There is a difference between experience and impact. If someone is having a negative impact on you, you get to say, you know, I really appreciate that you love my car, but really, you don't get to steal it. You don't. I appreciate that we're one, but this is my truck. Because I live in the world. I'm not of the world, but I do live in it. And so let me be fully in it. It's a both and. It's not an either or.
It's a both and. Okay? I don't know anybody who, if they fall off of something and break their leg, is going to go, I'm all perfectly complete. <laughs> Not going to go to the doctor. I'm good. Go to the doctor. <laughs> Ernest Holmes said, God's in the pill and the prayer. Okay? Go to the doctor. Because you are whole, perfect, and complete. And your leg is broke. <laughs> so, so, so if you want to continue to walk around and let folks know you're whole, perfect, and complete, go to the doctor. Well, so does the doctor. The doctor's whole, perfect, and complete, too. And the doctor has a whole, perfect, and complete cast for you. <laughs> Let's not get so spiritually fit we're no earthly good. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Know who you are. Throughout the rest of this month and all of next month, we're really going to get into the nuts and bolts of spiritual mind treatment. I'm going to close with this. Ernest Holmes says, it is not the form of the treatment which you give or the prayer which you make that gives it power. Rather, it is your faith. Where are you praying from? <coughs> That's your work, is to get clear. Where is your connection to your foundation? Are you praying from the second floor or are you willing to go all the way down into the footers and really connect with what sources you and trust that to create the life that is your magnificence because I don't know about you but if all I pray for is what I can imagine in my humanness, I sell myself so short. We can only, our brain, if it's a hard drive, the only information it has on it is from your past or someone else's. It doesn't have any future information. It has past information. So if you're praying from your brain, the best you get is a representation of your past again or somebody else's. What's available to us is so much more. More than we can imagine. And that's why we open to the imagination that's within us. That nudges us into the mystery to step into an experience that we're like, really? Are you sure? Because if you're not experiencing a little bit of, I don't know, you're not praying big enough. What if your comfort zone can be so much bigger? I'm not going to be stuck in my limitation anymore. If I was, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be. Because if you think the candidating process is like <laughs> anything less than, oh my God. <laughs> well, it's scary. Because I have to show up and let you see me. If I'm going to do it in integrity. And what if you don't like me? Well, what if you don't? What if I don't like you? <laughs> Martin Luther King said, it's really glad that the Bible said, I just have to love one another. I don't have to like you. <laughs> Some of us are going to like each other. It's okay. But if we know who we really are, we love each other. 
then we celebrate one another, and we give each other the appropriate space <laughs> to be one another. Okay. Final thing I'm going to say, if you think spiritual mind treatment is brainwashing, maybe you've got a dirty brain. <laughs> y'all but when I arrived I had some things that needed to be transformed that needed to be cleaned up so if spiritual mind treatment is brainwashing great I had some dirty in my brain I'm just saying it may not be a bad thing we're not a cult we're really not the microchip is not really there <laughs> to decide and there's nothing I can do to decide for you I just hold up the signs and for some of you that will work for some of you it won't and that is perfect absolutely perfect let's take this into practice What I know with absolute certainty is that there is only one infinite, ever-present source, the very foundation of all life. And because it is the very foundation of all life and I am living, it must be my foundation. Can't be any other way. And what is true of me is true of all life. So I speak my word claiming and affirming a new experience for each and every being of the very foundation that is the truth of them. That we each yield to that experience as it fits our individualized path. That there is no standardization and none needed, that each gets to delve into that glorious, individualized experience that says, ah, there I am. And that we begin to create from our foundation, from that deep faith that knows that it knows because it simply knows who it is. Grateful for this opportunity to serve. Grateful for this amazing community. And grateful to know that the truth is the truth is the truth. There's no waiting period. <laughs> and it's always true. Always true. And always done. That love only knows yes. And has already said it. I release, I let it go, I let it be. And so it is. Yes.